Welcome to another edition of The Power of Words with me, your host, Kevin Treasure, author of The Power of Words and Winner's Mentality. Our aim is to help people win in life through the power of their words. You are born to win. Welcome to another edition of The Power of Words and Winner's Mentality with me, your host, Pastor Kevin Treasure, a.k.a. The Winner's Mentality, helping you win with your words. And as you can see here, man, today's, today's title is entitled Keep Speaking to It. On our last program, it's all keep, speak to it, speak to it. I kept encouraging you, the listeners out there in podcast land, to keep speaking to your situation. And sometimes it's the hardest thing we can do when we're faced with difficulties and challenges in life is to keep speaking exactly what you want in the face of something that's contradictory to what we're believing for. I'm going to say that again, it's it's very hard sometimes and it's a test of your faith is to try and of your faith to speak something in the face of something that's totally contradictory to what you're believing for. Um, I take, for instance, you may say, OK, explain to me, Pastor Kev, my, my late bishop, um, years and years ago, he um, him and his wife were believing for a child. So if there's anybody out there, I want to encourage you who's believing for a child. And when they first got married, um, she had an ectopic pregnancy. Um, and because of that, the complications um, had a miscarriage and they said she could never have children again. Well, my bishop, being a man of faith, um, he's gone on to glory now. Being a man of faith, he said, well, I don't care what the doctors say. My wife is going to have babies. And he said, she's not just going to have one, she's going to have two. And he said, when I have a boy, I'm going to call him Joshua. I'm going to call him Joshua. And they said, well, you heard every Sunday, every, listen, as often as you saw him, said, my wife's going to have a baby. My wife's going to have a baby. The doctors have actually said, your wife cannot have children but he kept on saying my wife is gonna have a baby we're gonna have joshua we're gonna have joshua and seven years and within the seven years <clears throat> he he done something that looks crazy in the eyes of other people but faith doesn't make sense uh, i mean who speaks to mountains i mean who speaks to fig trees who speaks to the sun who calls down rain who prays for fire to fall from heaven who, who does those things but biblically it's been done and it's been proven and it works amen so he said listen joshua's come the, my wife's gonna have joshua my wife's gonna have joshua and he done something so prophetic he had a little table bought a little kids table <clears throat> and he bought a little kids knife and fork and a little kids chair <clears throat> and he'd set it next to them at home and every time he came home down in the morning he'd say good morning joshua um obviously got no response because there was no one there and when he was going to bed he'd say good night joshua and he'd done this for seven years straight i mean the, the faith of this person i mean even in regards to there's no change no belly bump no nothing change in the face of total adversity when nothing seems to be happening he kept speaking the bible says we can have whatever we say if we have faith and doubt not we can say unto any mountain and surely he's not speaking about obviously an actual mountain because we don't want him to move him because but he's talking about whatever seems to be a mountain in your life. And this was a mountain in the man of God and woman of God's life. This was a mountain in their life that they, they were believed God for. And they knew they were going to overcome. And on the seventh year, I remember he came into church and he said, my wife is pregnant. And he said, it's going to be a boy. And there's some people that had the cheek to say to him, suppose it's a girl. I mean, can, can you believe the cheek of some people? You've been believing God for a miracle but baby and you said i'm gonna have a boy and then do you think that you've been speaking this believing this, standing upon god's word and now you have a baby do you think god is going to give you something that you didn't ask for and sure enough seven years later joshua came i mean he's a big boy now he's a man now but that was so many years ago but i guess remember the faith of this man not only that he said well i want joshua and rebecca three four years later he had rebecca so he had joshua and Rebecca why because he believed he kept speaking amen according to Mark 11 Jesus saw the fig tree and he spoke to it the Bible says when we look in that scripture I want to look at it again he says that and seeing the fig tree and Jesus answered and he said unto it it was a thing it wasn't a living being he said he spoke to it no man eat fruit thereof forever and his disciples heard it. He spoke so people could hear it. Amen. And the man of God spoke that we could hear it. And Jesus said when they passed in the morning. As they passed by. They saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remember. Said unto him. Master behold the fig tree that you cursed. Is withered away. 
And Jesus said, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith speaks things and he does not doubt. He said, have the God kind of faith. If you read in the margin, for truly I say unto you that whosoever, so this is open to everybody, it is not limited. And I tell people, sometimes I see people that are not Christians having more success and then in speaking things, I mean, some people call it affirmations or positive speaking, but it all comes from the word of God. Jesus said, if listen, we can have whatever we say. He said, say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. And the man of God kept speaking. He kept speaking. He kept believing. Regardless of what people said, regardless of what it looked like, regardless of the doubters, people laughed at him three years later, didn't see it, four years later, six years later. But on the seventh year, I know some people have had to wait 14 years. I know um, of a man of God that had to wait 20 years before they received the promise. Abraham, as we know, waited until, I mean, God waited until it looked like it was, it's not going to happen by any normal circumstances. 100 years old, 99 years old, but God done it. It's a test of your faith, but when you're overcoming that area, it gives you faith for another area. And because of that one testimony, so many people gave birth to their child, their miracle baby, by seeing the faith of this man and woman of God, by seeing their faith and seeing how God blessed their faith and rewarded their faith. They believed God and said, listen, some of them have done the same thing. I know a friend of mine, he wanted a little girl first. He's, he's got a little girl and he wanted a little girl first and he, he brought a dress and he said, I'm going to call her Faith. And he, he brought a dress in advance. And they waited, they waited. But they got their little girl, a big girl now. But all these things, one person's miracle, one person's faith in God, one person's tenacity to believe God, regardless of the doubters and the gainsayers, but keep speaking what they want to see come to pass and having what they say. Some people say it's name and claim it. No, it's right there in Mark 11, 23, 24. If you have faith and doubt not, you see, this is the hard part. Amen. Because when situations arise and we're believing God for certain situations, you may be believing God for a house, or you may be believing God for a mortgage, or you may be believing God for a building, a church building, or ministry, or you believe in God for a job, or you just believe in God for some area of your life, or for marriage. And we see everybody else getting married, and you say, God, well, when is it going to be my turn? Listen, we speak believing, you speak believing, you keep speaking. God, you said I can have whatever I say. I speak to every mountain of doubt. I will not doubt. Regardless, I will not doubt, but I'll choose to believe your word. Choose to believe the word of God. The Bible says that Abraham believed God and it accounted him to righteousness. I believe Genesis 15, I believe. He said, listen, I'm going to make your, your, your seed as the numerous of the stars. If you can count the stars, then you'll be able to count your descendants. And in the Middle East and some of those foreign tropical countries, you have the the stars it gets in numerous they just light up the sky and before if you by the time you get to to five you've lost count um you, you can't remember which are, there's so many stars and he said if you can number the stars then you can number your descendants that's how many descendants you're gonna have and even as an old man his wife is old the bible simply means so the bible simply states that abraham believed god and that was counted to him for righteousness. We believe God that was saved because we put our trust in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He who we haven't seen, but we, yet we believe. We put our trust that Jesus Christ died for us sin. He rose again and he's coming back for us one day. Amen. And we believe that we're going to spend eternity in heaven. Amen. We believe that we, even though we haven't seen what we believe. What God is saying, oh, listen to me. I need you to keep believing for the things that you haven't got. Many of you are saying to God, bless me that I can be a blessing. I, I want money that i can open churches and bless churches i, I want to sow into ministries my heart's desire <clears throat> millions are too small for what's in my heart my heart's desire is billions because i want to sow into ministries that have a desire for souls i want to sow into soul ministries that are winning souls for jesus i want ministries i want to help build ministries all over the world africa asia amen in foreign countries countries where the gospel has not really been preached i want to pour money into those countries so they can start organizations and start churches amen Amen, that souls can be saved because that's God's heartbeat and that's my heartbeat. Amen. But I believe God, and if I look at my bank account, well, it doesn't match up to the vision that I have. But listen, I believe God, and I believe He will do what He said He would do. He would do what I've been believing Him for because it's in line with His heart. 
And with God, nothing shall be impossible. But I'm going to keep speaking it. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire for the glory of God. Not from what I want. I'm a millionaire for the glory of God. I like blessing people. I like giving to people. It's such a joy to give to someone. And if God can put me in a position where there's a homeless family and I can say, well, you know what? Here's a house. You know what? There you go. Stay in it until you get yourself on your feet. In fact, you know what? Keep it. That's yours. I mean, what joy would that bring? What joy would that bring? But I've got to keep speaking it. I've got to keep believing it, regardless of what it looks like. Elijah had called down fire from heaven and he had slain the prophets of Baal, all 450 of them, and the 400 at the Jezebel's table. He had slain 850 and then Baal worshippers. And the Bible says he told Ahab, get down, eat and drink, run, go, because there's a sound of the abundance of rain. Now, you've got to remember, there was a famine in the land. But he told him, listen, get you down, because there's a sound of of the abundance of rain not a cloud in the sky but he heard it in the spirit but what did he have to do he had to speak it he had to pray for it he had to pray until god answered and he said go go and see and he said he went and he said nothing there go and go seven times what is about seven today he said go seven times and he'd been praying he'd been calling on the lord god answer prayer god send rain god send rain god send rain he'd been calling on the lord send rain send rain because james says in james chapter 5 that elijah was a man of like passions what does that mean elijah was just like us he got upset as we do he got depressed as we do he got heavy he got angry i mean he, he was just like us he was a man of like passions but he had one gift he had one key to his life he could pray until he got answers he prayed that the heavens were shut up and he prayed again the bible says in the book of james and heaven gave rain do not give up on what you be believing for do not give up on what you be believing for if you're praying for something and you're believing God for something, the Bible says in Luke 18, there was a widow and she went to the unjust judge. Amen. And the Bible says, give me vengeance. Give me vengeance. I want what's mine. And the Bible says he wouldn't for a little while. And then he said to himself, do I do not fear, fear man? I do not regard God. I don't fear God. But because this woman troubles me because of her persistence, she kept coming, kept coming, kept speaking, kept speaking. She did not let up on what she had been believing for. Give me justice. Give me justice. And some of you may be in a situation where you are asking for justice. And you're not asking for vengeance, but you're asking for justice. Say, God, give me justice in this situation. God, give me favor in this situation. God, open doors for me to go abroad. Open doors for me to um, do what you've placed in my heart. Open doors for me to minister to the sick or to minister to those in prison. Open doors, amen, so I can be a, a vessel of honor for your glory that i can be your mouthpiece open doors that i can start business in this community in this nation you open doors god and keep speaking and keep believing don't let up don't stop don't let up don't stop until you see the promises of god what you've been believing god for because what you've got to remember when when these things happen when god finally does or what, what you've been waiting for comes to pass or what you've been praying for comes to pass what that does it builds faith in you it builds faith in you. I mean, I don't want some people believe God for, um, I mean, I'm not into the whole nice car stuff, or Rolls Royce or a Bentley. But I mean, I mean, start with a Toyota, I mean, I mean, come on. Some of you haven't even got a car and you want something. So have faith for a Toyota. <laughs> have faith for a Toyota or a Volkswagen. Amen. And then you can have faith for um, what, maybe a, a Nissan and then have faith for a BMW. Have, have faith for a Mercedes. But start somewhere because when you see him building your faith and building your faith, Dr. Yogi Cho, amen, he spoke about this when he was alive, amen, he believed God for a bicycle and a desk, something so simple that we think, but he didn't have it, and when you're poor, I mean, it's a big thing for you, and he used to tell people, look at my bicycle, look at my bicycle, and they say, where's your bicycle, can't you see it, and he says, it's blue, it's this, and he describe it, and people just like, oh, this guy, is, they like, put their finger in their head, like, this guy's nuts, you're you crazy, but he was in speaking what he believed would come to pass, and sure enough, as time went on, his bicycle came, his desk came, his ministry came, and he grew on. He went on to be. He said, "Make my church the biggest church," and his church wanted to be one of the the biggest church in the world, with so many members. But why? Because he started speaking. He started taking God at His word. Amen. I believe I will affect my generation with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was born to affect my generation with the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it shall happen. I don't know what you've been speaking, but this is the problem. Maybe you haven't been speaking. And I encourage you today, start speaking. Start speaking, amen, God's word. Start speaking what you want to see come to pass in your life. And you might say, oh, well, it doesn't make sense. No, if you don't speak what you see, you're going to have what you have. And nothing will change. 
But when you start speaking, the Bible says when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, the Bible says it began to wither at the root. It withered in the invisible. So like when we speak, it's going out, our words are going out into the realm of the spirit. Our words are going out into the realm of the spirit and man it's going into the invisible i want to let people know we live in a real world but there's an invisible world which affects the real world i'm gonna let you know the spirits are real angels are real amen but there's an invisible world that affects the real world but when we speak and man we have authority when we speak things happen the bible says we shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass the bible says where the word of a king is there is power and the revelation calls us kings and priest amen that's what revelation says and he says if we're kings and priests where the word of a king is there is power so if you're a king and you're a priest when you speak there is power power is manifest but what are you speaking are you speaking death or are you speaking life what are you speaking begin to speak life begin to speak life the bible says that in the book of as we know ezekiel 37 that god brought ezekiel down in the vision to a valley and there's dry bones and it was very very dry and God asked him one simple question. Can these bones live? And Ezekiel, being a smart guy, I mean, he said, but God, only you know, God, only you know. And he said, prophesy. God didn't say, I'm going to do it. No, God has given the earth to men. Anything that God is going to do in the earth, let me tell you something. Like, he has to use a man or a woman. He's been known to use children and he's also been known to use a donkey. But his preference is men. He's going to use a man. He's given dominion to man. He said, you speak. And we began to prophesy. He began to speak. And I began to prophesy. Bones began to come together. Sinews came on. Flesh came on. He said, and when he stood up, it was the whole army. So he went down to a graveyard. But in fact, what he didn't know, it was an actual army. It was a battleground of dead, dried up soldiers. But it was a battleground. He thought it was just an ordinary graveyard. But it was a battleground of soldiers. It was an army. And there's an army of people out there, amen, that want to serve God. There's an army of people out there in the clubs, in the dance, and on the streets, in the gangs, in prosecution, on the streets, doing things that they should not be doing. But it's an army of people that are dead in sins and trespasses. And it's our job to speak to them with the preaching of the gospel, which is the foolishness of God. It pleased God to use the preaching of the gospel, the foolishness of preaching, to save some. And God is saying, I want you to be the vessel. I want you to prophesy to the dead in sin and trespasses, that they may live, that they may come in and live and come into their destiny. He said, Ezekiel, you speak to them. And he said, as he began to speak, God didn't speak. He said, I'm, uh, God didn't say, I'm almighty God, let me do it. No, he said, you speak, Ezekiel. And when Ezekiel started to speak, things started to happen. And he said, prophesy, he said, prophesy that life may come into them. So he spoke all the way through, all the way through. He wanted to use a man, all the way through. He's using, looking for a voice. He's looking for a voice. He's looking for someone he can use and speak through. A man that he can speak because his words are spirit and life. But keep speaking, Ezekiel kept speaking until the army rose up and life came into them. Saying, This is the whole house of Israel. He said that our parts are rotten, our parts are disjointed. But this is the whole house of Israel. And how has it come about? How is this army going to live? How are the dead going to live? How are the dead raised? Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come forth. How are the dead raised? By speaking. Speak to everything that appears dead in your life. And keep speaking. I encourage you. It looks bleak. But you keep speaking. God, I thank you. I believe you. Listen to me. Money cometh to me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We're not lovers of money. But listen, money answers everything. We need money to pay our bills. Listen, we, none of us live in a house for free. And when we have to pay for gas, electricity, if you're mortgage free, bless the Lord, I'm on my way just like you. I decree I'm mortgage free. But even when you have a mortgage, you need gas, you need waters, you need utilities. You need to pay for those things. We need to pay to send our kids to school, pay for clothes, pay for food. We need money to, money is the currency of this world. But faith is the currency of the kingdom. I'm going to say that again. Money is the currency of this world. But faith is the currency of the kingdom. So use your faith to get what you want believe god take him at his word keep speaking no matter what it looks like keep speaking because when you speak things happen in jesus name this has been me kevin treasure aka the winner's mentality hoping you win with your words be blessed in jesus name thank you for tuning in to the power of words the winner's mentality please remember to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review 
check out our website kevintreasure.com follow us on instagram and facebook you are born to win